Hi, so I've been toying around with the Bitcoin price data and what you see over here is my newest creation. This is actually a Bitcoin chart, but obviously not an ordinary chart. This is the Bitcoin price divided by the Bitcoin market cap. So what you see over here is that the price relative to the market cap is declining. And just for reference, since middle of April 2014 to today, we are looking at an approximately 33% decline. Now, what does that mean? Now, when you do something similar for Ethereum, you get a very comparable chart. So since the end of August 2017 to today, we are looking at a 19% drop. And you can basically see this for any cryptocurrency. And all that means is more money is needed over time to keep the price of a cryptocurrency stable. So what you see over here is nothing else but inflation. So the miners, they get rewarded for running their hardware, for spending the electricity. And so new supply gets issued to the miners and this additional supply enters the market, increases the market cap and if there's no new demand would then depress the prices. So another way to look at this is for example when we compare the Bitcoin prices from the recent peaks, right? So when we look at the peak of the last bull run, to today, we are looking at a price increase of approximately 8%. So that's in the Bitcoin price. But when we look at the market cap of Bitcoin, in the same period, we have an approximately 100% increase. So say the prices in crypto stay exactly the same for a long period of time, the money that is tied into the crypto market increases because of the new issuance, because of inflation. So here's why the new issuance or the inflation of the cryptocurrency matters over the long term. So what we have here in Bitcoin is an approximately 20 percentage point difference, right? 100% gain in market cap, but only an 80% gain in price. Now let's compare this to Ethereum. In Ethereum, we grew approximately 54% from the last peak to today. The market cap, however, grew by 86%. So that's a 32 percentage points difference. So the inflation rate in Ethereum was higher than in Bitcoin. Now, why is that? That's basically programmatically determined, right? The inflation rate of Bitcoin halves every four years. And in Ethereum, that's a bit different. The inflation policy basically changes over time. There's some kind of voting mechanism. And so in the end, all stakeholders update the monetary policy, so to speak, of Ethereum from time to time. So it's not as predictable as for Bitcoin. Now, this is again the Bitcoin price divided by the Bitcoin market cap. And this graph is declining over time. It takes more and more money to keep the price at the same level. You could also flip this chart. So looking at the Bitcoin market cap divided by the Bitcoin price. And by doing this, we can see since April 2014, we see that the market cap grew 50% faster than the price. Or in other words, if there was no issuance at all, there wouldn't be any mining subsidy in Bitcoin, then the price right now, given the same amount of money flows into Bitcoin, would be 50% higher right now. Now, if you're wondering how to do this by yourself, it's relatively easy. You go to tradingview.com and then you enter crypto cap colon and then your ticker symbol of your crypto, so in this case BTC, and then you divide by whatever exchange you want to use to take your prices. So in this case, I just used BLX and you just divide this, you press enter and then you get this chart. And so I also have the chart for ADA prepared over here for Cardano. And I don't know Cardano enough to answer why this chart looks the way it does. If you do know why we have the step function over here, please let me know in the comments below. But what we see here is basically that the Cardano price divided by the Cardano market cap was pretty stable for a while. And then we seem to have gotten a sudden issuance. And we got this twice. We got this once in uh, September 2000 and then again in February or March 2021. And during those two issuances, the overall circulating ADA increased by approximately 23%. Now, I'm not sure if this is something fundamental, something specific to Cardano, or if this is just some kind of data glitch here in TradingView. I find this actually relatively surprising given that the new token issuance happens through those pools and through the staking. So I would have expected a way more continuous graph over here, similar to what we see in Ethereum and Bitcoin. And so if there is no fundamental reason for this, what you can take from this is that at least the 
market cap chart for Cardano seems to be relatively flawed in TradingView because this is not something that I think is right. Now, when we look at Dogecoin, we got a lot of fluctuation, of course. Um, but in the end, we see that supply increased by approximately 8% since July 2019. And so obviously that's not very good, right? It's a very short time period, a lot of inflation happening. This was already known. There's a lot of new Doge being printed all the time. But it also puts things into perspective, right? Because the price fluctuation within those coins are really, really large, right? They're like in the multiple axes. And we are looking at quote unquote only 8% inflation in this time period. So I think this number actually only matters if you're really looking at the long term over several market cycles and you hold a coin for many, many years. That's when inflation matters. But what this also tells you is that the halvening is probably not as important on the price as a lot of people make it out to be, right? The stock to flow model basically tells you, okay, when there's a halvening, we get approximately 10x price increase in Bitcoin. So that's this chart over here, right? Each time we get a halvening every four years, the new supply of Bitcoin gets cut in half. The price is supposed to go up around 10x. And the theoretical reason for this is basically just a cross asset analysis. These are the stock to flows of different commodities and those are their market caps. And thus, based on those variables, we come up with a price like this. But if you look at Ethereum versus Bitcoin that do have quite different inflation rates, we see that the price differences are not that significant, right? In Bitcoin, we had 20% inflation from the last cycle top to today. In Ethereum, we had 32% from the last top to today. So the inflation rates, the new supply rates, they were quite different, but the price developments themselves haven't been that different, right? The stock to flow model basically says, okay, we now go from 2% to 1% inflation and thus the price has to 10x. But we already have these kind of differences in inflation between Bitcoin and Ethereum. But we don't see that much of a difference in price development between those two assets. And so that tells me that the stock to flow model is really just that. It's just a model. It already breaks down when you compare Bitcoin to Ethereum with their respective inflation rates. Because if it was true, Bitcoin would have to grow way quicker than Ethereum since the inflation rate of Bitcoin is lower. Now you could argue there is discussions in the Ethereum community to reduce inflation rates, especially once proof of stake is implemented. But if you base your theory around this forward thinking approach, then it also wouldn't make sense for the stock to flow model to have these step approaches because the inflation rates are already known for Bitcoin. And the stock to flow model says that the new price adjustment will happen once the halvening kicks in, once the new supply gets cut in half, not in a foreseeing effect. So even though I like the predictions of the stock to flow model, I like that Bitcoin might go to a million in like four years or in eight years. I'm relatively skeptical because it already doesn't work for Ethereum or for the comparison of Bitcoin to Ethereum. Otherwise, Bitcoin dominance would be way higher. Now I've got a few more very interesting charts. But before we continue, if you enjoy this kind of content, please give this video a like. YouTube will then show the video to a new audience and the channel can grow. Thank you. TradingView has these dominance charts, right? The most popular one is the Bitcoin dominance chart, which basically says how important is Bitcoin as a fraction of the overall crypto market? So how many percent of crypto is Bitcoin? So currently we are at 46% and you have these charts for all kinds of cryptos, right? So this is Bitcoin. We've also got Ethereum. So that's the Ethereum dominance chart hovering between 25% to at the bottom 7%. So you can see basically the Ethereum dominance goes down when there's a big crypto crash. It goes back up when we have a bull run. But one chart that I find especially interesting is the others dominance. So that means besides all those bigger altcoins, right? Like ADA and Ethereum and Bitcoin, those smaller coins, how important are they over time? And this chart goes back for quite a while. It starts in March 2014. And until today, we grew by approximately 14x in terms of dominance. Now, the problem is I couldn't really find a way how to clean up this data because what we are really interested in is not really how dominant are those smaller coins, but it's actually how much money could we make. And I don't believe that if you had invested in a basket of those other coins, that your performance would have been around this area, around 13, 14x. And the reason is, again, inflation. Those other coins, they got more money, right? But if you look, for example, at Dogecoin, 
Dogecoin has a really high inflation. So you, as a holder of the cryptocurrency, you can't really profit from this, right? If the inflation is high enough in those other altcoins. And per tendency, I believe most altcoins have a higher inflation than Bitcoin. Then you will make much less money than what this chart here implies. Now, if you've got an idea how to roughly determine the inflation rate of all those other coins, let me know. That would be really interesting because if we find out in the end that the inflation rate is high enough to make this graph maybe even fall or at least grow much less, then we would have a case that investing into smaller altcoins, at least over the long term, might be problematic. So that would mean that those smaller altcoins, they're really just a trading vehicle to figure out imbalances in the market and try to chase the trends and profit in this way and not really a long-term investment in most cases. But unless we really know the inflation rate of all those other coins, it's way harder to make such a statement. Now, last but not least, I want to show you a few more of those inflation curves. So this one is the inflation curve for XRP. So the market cap increased 20% quicker than the price from April 2018 to today. Then we've got Litecoin. Litecoin went up approximately 22% from the end of 2017 to today. So the way to calculate those inflation rates, right, in case you're wondering, it's relatively straightforward. So in this case, we've got 22% in three and a half years. So the way to calculate this is you take 1.22, so 2.2 for 22%, to the power of one divided by the number of years. And so then you get the annual inflation rate. So in this case, it's 5.8% for Litecoin. Now, this is obviously an approximation. There seems to be quite a bit of noise in the data. But that's at least what you get when you look at this chart. Now, here's what you have for EOS. EOS seems to have less of an inflation, so only 6.7% since May 2018. But strangely enough, a lot of fluctuation in this chart as well. And now we are looking at LINK, the same strange pattern that we already had in the ADA chart where there was no real difference to the market cap. And then a step function. Here we are also looking at 24% in a relatively short time frame. Now, I wouldn't give those charts too much credit, right? The Bitcoin chart looks relatively clean. We have these funny outliers over here. Who knows where they come from? You ask me, I ask three. But at least we can see over the long term, there seems to be a pretty predictable path here. It seems to somewhat work. And the same goes for Ethereum. So final takeaway, if you're investing for the long term in a crypto project, always try to find out the inflation rate. Usually this is public information. Make sure that these inflation rates are somewhat predictable. You don't want them to suddenly shoot up. But in the end, don't overestimate the inflation rate like the stock to flow model does, right? Just because inflation drops by, say, a percentage point doesn't mean the price has to 10x. If that was the case, Ethereum's market cap relative to Bitcoin's market cap would be way lower. So there's always two sides to the coin, right? There's demand and there's supply. And the real driver of those really large price movements here is obviously demand. It's not supply. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe. I publish videos two to three times every week. And if you've got Telegram, feel free to join our channel. It's completely spam free. We are a small group. We discuss crypto over there. You can also ask me questions there. See you next time. Bye bye.